This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're at the Haymaker Gym here in London. Delighted to be joined by legendary trainer, Mr Buddy McGurk. How are you, sir? Great, thank you. Um, talk to us, Buddy, about how the link-up with Derek first came about. It raised a few eyebrows, a few people were surprised, but how did it come about? But he hit me on Instagram and uh, asked me for my number. I gave him my number. We talked, then I came out for a week. We worked for a week, and here I am. In that short space of time, obviously, over the years, I've known Derek. He's a very uh, complex character, uh, very unpredictable, up and down. There's a, a load of words to describe Derek, but how would you describe kind of your initial kind of time with Derek? I mean, he's a, to me, he's a great guy. I mean, you know, he, like you say, he's different, but he's a great guy. So, I mean, I have no complaints. Um, how much of Chisora's career have you followed over the years, buddy, prior to this? To be honest, I've never seen him fight, if you want to know the honest to God truth. I've heard about him, but I've never, ever seen him fight. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. So the dynamics between you and Derek are kind of brand new. There's a clean yeah. slate there. Exactly. Does that work positively? Of course. I mean, um, he's been in the game a long time. I've been in the game a long time. So we just the key is getting on the right track and understanding each other. I find that fascinating where you haven't seen any of his fights. I'm sure you've, you've heard of Derek, but kind of how that dynamics works for the first time when you haven't seen a fighter train, what is it you gauge for? What is it you look for to see whether it kind of fits between a fighter and a trainer? See, there you go. You, get, you come spend the week to see if it fits. If it don't fit, no hard feelings. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I came for a week, we gelled, and, and then I went home and I came back. I'm assuming since that time, though, you've watched some of Derek's Nightball fights. You haven't? No, I haven't. I don't need to watch his fights. I see enough in here. The, you know, I can't judge him on those. I got to judge him for what I see here. You know I mean? Here's where it's important. That's, that's the past. I can't dwell on that. I got to dwell on it now. As experienced as you are, but as experienced as Derek is as a fighter, what can you do, in your opinion, to kind of add to what Derek already has now? It's, it's just basically reminding him because you're not going to change him. So you just got to remind him and, and try to uh, smooth a couple of the rough edges. Okay. That's interesting. That's interesting. The fight's only, what, two or three weeks away. Obviously, Joseph Parker, former world champion, he's been in with good caliber of opponents. What kind of fight are you expecting here for Derek? I mean, listen, there's only one way he's got to win this, and that is he's got to take it, he's got to make war out of it. There's no, there's no stand on the outside trying to outbox the guy. You gotta put the pressure on him right away. This is, it's not a secret. Joseph Parker, obviously, uh, last time out against Junior Farr. Um, he, again, he's been in with the likes of Anthony Joshua, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So he's coming here with a point to prove as well, Joseph Parker. New trainer for him as well. So it's all to play for. Oh, I mean, listen, I know that there's a lot at stake on this, you know, I mean, on this fight. So the key is just for us to focus, do what we have to do to make Joseph Parker think about what we're going to do to him, not what he's going to do to us. Is this the potential start of a, an extended relationship past this fight, or are we seeing how this fight goes, first well, of all? I'd like to take it one day at a time. So how long have you been in the UK for, buddy? Uh, three weeks now. Okay. And you've been staying in London? Yes. And how have you found out? I, I mean, you've been here before. I mean, it's hard to find it, you know, in this part of London because everything... Because of the pandemic, everything was on lockdown. So, you know, you can't really enjoy it like you want to. So I'm hoping before I leave, it opens up a little bit so I can see a little more. Well, from Monday the 12th of April, things were starting to open again. So there are, obviously, you would have noticed in the last week that things are starting to kind of resume back to some sort of normality, whatever that normality is. But I live in Florida where it's 90 degrees. So <laughs> apart from the weather, when I come in, it's 30 or 40. I don't want to go outside. Um, Derek has always kind of been tagged with the man with the cat with nine lives, etc. He's been in multiple exciting fights over his career, but um, there's something about Derek as a person, as a fighter, that the public want to see. He's a great guy, I'm telling you, man. He's interesting, but all in all, behind all that rough rah rah, he's a hell of a guy. Just finally, buddy. Um, yeah, prediction: it's going to be a war. This fight, Chisora going for the for the kill, for the knockout. No, we're just going for the win. I mean, I don't care how we get it. The key is just to get it. Okay. Buddy, listen, appreciate your time. Have you got anything else uh, you'd like to add before we finish, my friend? Just say thank you uh, for the support and uh, 
hopefully I get to get out with this weather and enjoy London a little bit. Well, today's a hot day here in, in the UK, not compared to your Florida weather, but obviously uh, here for us, this is decent weather. Well, hopefully it'll get more decent tomorrow. <laughs> Buddy, thank you very much for your time, and uh, we'll catch up with you fight week. All right, thank you very much. Oh!